Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hujiwana and today we're covering spacecraft centrifuges. And let's jump right into talking about why you'd even want to include one in the first place. It's pretty simple really, we evolved while experiencing a constant force of 1G, so our bodies function best while under those conditions. Take us out of that and into freefall, aka 0G, and stuff starts to not work quite right. Fluids equalise throughout the body, leading to stuff like puffy faces. Our eyeballs change shape. Our bones and muscles weaken because they're no longer under stress, so the body starts to get rid of them. And most of that waste goes through the kidneys, so there's a big increase in kidney stones. And there's loads of other problems too. The bone and muscle loss can be mitigated through exercise on special equipment, like strapping yourself to a treadmill or by simulating weightlifting by pulling on a vacuum. The Expanse books mention you using elastic for this, but they don't have a constant force and also wear out over time. But this stuff is only suitable for a part of the health issues. All the other problems are still there, though some of them can be mitigated somewhat with medication or adaptation. To really solve them all at once, you need artificial gravity, which comes in three flavours. Firstly, there's the purely generated gravity that's all over the place in sci-fi because, well, it's convenient. Not every setting needs anything more complicated than that. Secondly, there's a linear acceleration, where what you're on moves up beneath you, letting you stand on it. And last Lastly, there's rotational gravity, which is kind of like the second one. It works like this. Spin something around and it experiences an outward force away from the centre of rotation. This is centrifugal force. This outward force can be used just like real gravity, and you can stand up and walk around on the inside of a spinning object. It's like when you get pressed into your seat when going through a banked turn on a roller coaster, but just all the time. There's some peculiarities with this though, like the Coriolis force. This is due to the difference between the inertial frame of reference of an object, its own point of view, and the rotating frame of reference when it's inside a spinning body, like a big storm on a planet, a ball rolling on a merry-go-round, or something dropped in a centrifuge. It makes things curve in unexpected ways if you're not very used to it, as objects go further when thrown anti-spinward and less far when thrown spinward. This would really screw up that baseball game at the end of Interstellar. There's a good detail on the Citadel in Mass Effect that touches on this problem, and The Expanse has its liquid pouring scene in the spun-up series, though I don't think the trajectory would be quite so wiggly. Hey ho, artistic license, because it does look cool. The thing with Coriolis Force is that it isn't limited to just objects being thrown about. It affects everything, but since most things are going to be anchored to or at least touching the ground, they don't fly off out of control. Things rolling about can do so in odd ways though, and particular care does need to be taken with heavy machinery, and even on the scale of a person, it may feel weird to move around. You may even get motion sickness from it since it messes with the inner ear, which is also a problem with the next thing, the relationship between centrifugal fuse size and its spin rate. This defines how much force is generated. If you keep the spin rate the same, the bigger the radius, the more force there is. Or the other way around. The faster the spin rate on a fixed radius, the stronger the artificial gravity is, like in the season 3 opener of For All Mankind. To think of it another way, if you want to hit a particular G target in a small centrifuge that fits inside a small vessel, it has to spin faster. But that also increases the Coriolis force too. This also mixes together with another potential issue, the gradient in force at different heights. Think about it, if being further away from the centre of a centrifuge increases the outward-downward force, then someone standing up feels more downward pull at their feet than at their head. In a big, slow-spinning space habitat, this isn't going to be very pronounced, but on a small, fast one jammed into a spacecraft, it's much more of a problem. But you just have to put up with that if that's all you can fit into a launch vehicle, or inside the armour of your warship. Apparently, it is possible to adapt to those negative effects from Coriolis force in really tiny centrifuges, but I'm sceptical. Another point on centrifuges in spacecraft and these big giant rings and tubes we see in much of fiction aren't suitable for every type or size of craft. Take the Nauvoo in The Expanse. It was a good generation ship, but a poor warship with all that open air making wasted space. It did make for a good space station though, as would any station using this form factor. So if you can't have a whole big ring, have parts of it, or ones that deploy out in some way. Avatar's ISVs do both, as their centrifuge segments fold flat when under thrust gravity. 
This sort of style is also what you can do to fit a centrifuge segment into a launch vehicle, as with the Pilgrim Observer concept. One of the issues with these rotating segment designs is the mechanical complications where they attach to the non-rotating part of the ship. You have to pass electrical and fluid connections through it somehow, like with slip rings. And there's also wear and tear and maintenance to consider on all these moving parts. There's another issue with attaching spinning things to things that are not meant to spin, counter torque. There's nothing to push back against in space, so if you want to spin up a centrifuge and not have the non-spinning part just turn the other way, you have to expend propellant to hold it in place. Or have a deliberate counter-spinning section, be it a whole second centrifuge or just a counterweight. Doing this also prevents another issue, where the spinning segment would act like a giant gyroscope, impacting the vessel's ability to rotate. While we're talking about the unintuitive mechanics of rotational momentum, let's have a look at the discovery in 2010, the year we made contact. When it was rediscovered in orbit around Io, it was caked in sulphur from the moon's volcanoes and also tumbling end over end. This was due to the slow spinning down of its centrifuge, which had transferred its energy to the entire craft. But shortly then the craft would just be rolling? Well, at first, yeah, but a long, thin object spinning in that axis is unstable. It's going to flex and wobble, causing it to process until it hits the more stable, lower energy state it's seen in over Io. Many of those earlier design issues can be avoided by just spinning the entire craft or station instead of having two segments to it. Just be careful of rotational stability. This is very easy to do with a big space station, as I talked about before, but when you have to stick a craft into a launch vehicle, or have other size constraints, things get more difficult. But one solution is to just tumble the craft end over end, making its nose become the floor. This does mean the spin rate to reach the desired amount of artificial gravity is dependent on how long your ship is though, and we've already seen that too high of a spin rate is bad. But you can change the radius of this tumbling spacecraft by having the ship separate into two parts, like in the movie Stowaway. Scott Manley consulted on this movie and has an excellent couple of videos about it you should go watch for more on this topic. And you don't even need to use one craft for this, you can tether two different ships together to get the same thing, just make sure each side is balanced. This is less of an issue with a spinning rod, but an unbalanced full circle can have all kinds of oscillations happen. Probably more of an obvious concern with small, fast centrifuges though, especially when proportionally the mass of stuff inside it is bigger. Speaking of mass, moving mass up and down the radius of a centrifuge is also going to alter its spin rate. Think of it like a figure skater moving their arms in or out while doing a spin. I'm not sure if either of these things are really a big deal or not, but it's something that happens. Related to those two things is where do you dock stuff to a centrifuge? Connecting at the rim involves matching the lateral movement, which can be complex, risky and uses propellant. Central docking at the hub is a lot easier since at most you just need to match spin rate, and you don't even need to do that if the hub is non-rotating. But depending on the design of the centrifuge, this may not be possible. Like say if it was a whole huge asteroid or dwarf planet that was spun up. And to be fair, docking at the rim does make undocking easier since you just drop out and away. Which is also a slight concern if you happen to be doing anything out on the exterior, so be very careful if you don't have a safety line. So that's how to include centrifugal gravity on a spacecraft or station, and it's not like you're stuck with being super realistic sci-fi if you do that. Look at Babylon 5 where it is used in conjunction with generated gravity, where they show technological differences between older and newer craft, and in Mass Effect where it's convenient to have on the Citadel and also lets it be a very cool shape, so just including them for vibes is good too, or including them because something that spins is just really cool. But spinning is so much cooler than not spinning. I'm the general. I want it to spin. You can support Space Talk by joining our Patreon, where you can get our frigate and space fighter design reference books. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters, and thank you for watching.